All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Hoop Dreams Magazine, Bridging the Gap podcast. Uh, today, we got a special guest here, um, New Mission Titan alums, also with former New Mission head coach, Corey McCarthy. Uh, I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves. Ty Lee, graduated in 2016. Charlie Mitchell, graduated in 2017. Samantha McDaniels, class of 2011. Darius Davis, class of 2011. Charles Mitchell, class of 2017. Corey McCarthy. <laughs> All right, first and foremost, we're going to get this started. Um, so, Corey, um, just first and foremost, with the feeling of being in this gym um, with five former players um, that you used to coach, how does it feel to know that you can continue to reach out to your former players and they respond? Um, to your comment. They definitely responded quick the past couple of days. Today, mainly, too. Um, it's, it's great. Um, I talk to these guys all the time. I think, um, I think the world of these guys, um, it, our relationships got better after they graduated. Uh, it was a little bit tough. It was a struggle in the beginning. Um, I'm not an easy person to deal with. So it's, it's, it's a, definitely a blessing to work with these guys and, um, to see where they are. Um, it, um, it makes it easier for me to retire because I get to go watch games or I get to hang out with these other guys. So it's, it's definitely a good look. Uh, does it sound funny to hear that Corey's retired? Man, Corey ain't really retired, man. He'll be back in a couple of years. He'll be back. Everybody believe that? Yeah, yeah. it sounds like that. <laughs> he, just wants to see, he just wants to see his son play high school for a little bit. He'll be back. Yeah, right. So especially like the way he was invested with us, like, he was really all in. So like to say he's retired right now is, is crazy. Do you believe that, Corey? That I mean, by the look on your face, you look like you're, you're thinking about coming back, back already. <laughs> by just by hearing. You. If, I, if I had this team, I was coming back. <laughs> if I had this starting five, I was coming back. I'll come back anywhere. Um, no, I'm not coming back. Um, I, I I have a new mission in Boston Public Schools. Um, I think our school is taking on um, a different level. There's a higher purpose now in terms of what I'm trying to do. Uh, I really do want to watch my son play, but I actually had, had a lot of joy last weekend uh, watching Asante play and um, watching the Twins and Tyreek play. And um, a lot of, um, I was at peace with what, with, with what I'm doing with basketball. Um, I'm done, but I, I, don't, I don't mind um, teaching the game. Um, we have some seventh graders here who are amazing, and they kind of got, I feel like a vampire when I tasted blood watching them play because um, they're talented as well. So I may just do some skill work with them. But other than that, no, I'm done. How'd you get into coaching? By accident. Um, I came to New Mission, and they needed a girls coach. Um, we were in the charter school. They would try to get in the charter school league. The girls were awful. Um, and they needed some accountability. Some of the toughest kids in the school were the girls, and um, they needed them. They needed someone with a really tough approach. That was before I got there, obviously. <laughs> before Samir got there, right? <laughs> Whatever. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> but um, so then I started coaching the girls. It was really hard, um, but I found success there. Um, I ended up getting a girl who turned into an All-American, um, ironically, um, and we took off from there. It made folks want to go to the school. If I didn't win state championship, with a, if I didn't win a state championship, a charter championship, the two charter championships that they don't talk about, by the way, uh, we won a the charter school championship twice before we moved on. I guess it's a big deal now, but um, before we moved on to the MIAA, we won charter school championships, um, won that, and then we went into the MIAA only to be told that we weren't going to win any games. And next thing you know, we're in a state title game at the Garden. First encounter with Corey McCarthy, how was it? Everybody had to tell you. You want to go first? <laughs> uh, first encounter, at the, I didn't, he didn't know me coming in freshman year. So when I was playing JV, me and him, we were just kind of like quiet, like dap up. But when I moved up to sophomore year, I got to see what he really was like, like hold you accountable, clown you. Toughen you up, things like that. It was just, it was just helpful at the end of the day. <clears throat> First encounter was when I walked through these doors, BCLA. He was waiting right there with me and my, like me and my brother walked in. He was waiting right there. I didn't know who the guy was at first. To be honest, 
Like, cause I, I don't remember. act stupid now. Don't, act, don't, don't play yourself. Don't play yourself no, no, now. No. You got Google. I did it. I did it. I, did it. Like, I talked to him like over the phone and stuff like that. But like when we first got here, I didn't know like like what he looked like. So man, when we got here, you know, and then I I met him and he just had that straight face. Like yeah, I was like yeah, it's gonna about be business. tough. Yeah, about business. And I was like yeah, so I'm at the right place. First encounter with Corey. Um, I was at like a crossroads when I met him, like coming into uh, high school. Like I was, a, I was a bad kid growing up. So like Corey kind of told me the story about like college and all that, like things that I never thought about before. So uh, he told me that story and from that I, I listened to him for like the rest of my life. I still listen to him today, it's crazy. But he's always been like a mentor, a brother, a father figure. Tough. My first encounter with Corey was, what I can remember was sophomore year when he transitioned to be the head coach. And, I didn't want shit to do with him. I didn't want to listen to him. <laughs> Anything he said. And I think it was, looking back now that I'm older, I think I was a little arrogant because I knew no one, like there was no one else on the team that could take my spot. So it was like, Cody's talking, all right, like, I don't care what you're saying. Like, who you going to put in? The girls coach. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, what, I used, that's like, what I looked at him. I was like, he was a girls coach. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> I was about like, to be like, like <laughs> and I remember like, like, what's he going to know? And like, I ain't going to front. After junior, my junior year going in, I realized that he really cared about this. Like, he was invested, and there was someone that talked to me on Coach Hill. And he just like just being invested. Corey like really cares. Like stop listening to the outsiders. And that was one of the things that me being young and immature was. I was letting outside people affect the way I thought. Like Corey can coach. Like he would say something that probably was dead right. And I'd be like you can't coach. Like your girls coach. And that family loyalty and disciplined character. That was like when he instilled that into us. It, it really brought like a brotherhood. Really appreciate that. My first encounter with Corey, I'm like, oh, I hate this dude. Hey. Like, always yelling, <laughs> but he did it for like a reason. He knew, he knew ways to get to me, and he would keep like pushing it, like yelling it, like over ten. Like now, I walk in over twelve, like yeah. But, Second half over twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I jinxed you though because I tweeted like I was like yeah 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 D one D one. <laughs> And you go 0 for 12 and embarrass my tweet. <laughs> See, like that, but he knew like how to get to me and what made me like be better as a player and also as a student athlete. When I first met Ty, Ty was supposed to Notice go. Notice I, I didn't ask him. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, because they ain't going to get me. And I ain't going to get them. Yo, <laughs> Ty was supposed to go to Eastie. And he was so mad that he had to come here. And I was like, yo, I'm gonna have to deal with this dude, man. Like, and then the funny story about Ty is that right before the state, the state tournament, I was telling the story the other day. I kicked him. I was about to kick him off the team. The entire school, like one by one, had a different story as to why he should stay on the team. Like, yo, man, you know Ty's doing better in school. Now you know he's not that bad of a kid, all right? And I know he's about to say something stupid, but you don't get to talk yet. So, <laughs> um, but. Um, you know, yeah, that was my first encounter. He was supposed, the kid was supposed to go to Eastie, and he was sort of like, he was very much, very similar to Darius in terms of, you know, uh, whether or not, you know, if they, if he should have some belief level in me or not. So eventually he bought in, just like Darius did. And, you know, I bought into them, so it was just, that's just how it worked. Um, the Twins, I always knew about those guys. Um, and the reason I knew about them, because I used to watch middle school basketball, and, um, one of them was so soft, he got a concussion. Whenever it mattered, he got hurt. Um, I, don't know, I don't know what I'm talking about, but the, maybe the one who went 12 at UMass Lowell the other day. But, you know, whenever it mattered, he got hurt. But, but you, know, um, you know, but they were, there was, it, was a different, it was definitely a different style of coaching that I had to do. Um, it brought out the, uh, it made me a better coach because I had to change my style. Um, Samir. Uh, I always packaged Samir and Darius because they was, I always felt like there was a package deal. Um, they're still best friends to this day. Um, but I met these guys, you know, Samir. Um, everybody told me before I met Samir that I shouldn't have, you know, he's not a kid that you should invest in. Um, he was outside of Reggie Lewis one day and somebody said they saw him try to get at somebody in, the, in a very um, hood kind of way. And, um, you know, and, and Darius was the kid that, you know, I think, Honestly, I think that people didn't think he was going to turn out to be the way he, was, he is right now. They thought they probably thought he was going to be somewhere um, making computers or something like that. Um, 
you know, he, he wasn't that tall. He was super skinny. He was probably 98 pounds. <laughs> but, but he could hit a jump shot and play defense. And he, under, and he always knew every play. And even if he knew the play, and he, he would just mess with you and be like, nah, that's not it. Nah, that's not it. So, um, yeah, that's how I met these guys, even though you didn't ask me. I know Ty want to say something. I was just about to say, I got him two of them rings. Just saying. <laughs> and that was my next question. So everybody's sitting here. Don't ask about the team. One team. Oh, yeah. the, one team was the best team. Everybody, no. everybody, everybody, does everybody have a ring at the table? Yes. yes. I got two. Everybody got two. I got two. I got two. I got two. I got two. Hey, how many city championships? We don't. We don't, many, we don't have to talk about teams. We don't have to talk about rings. We can talk about individuals. It's not the there's we, no debate. We can talk about individuals. Who's there the is a play? debate. You can't hold me. You can't hold me. You can't hold me. You can't hold me. You're old. You're washed up. It's old. 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 Yeah, let's be honest with ourselves. Y'all think y'all best team could have beat our best team. Yes. 18 and 8 in the States. Just saying. Your be y'all best team could have yes. beat our best team. Yeah. Y'all are not best team. Hey, what was y'all record? Nah. I'm not arguing with you. What was your record? What was no, your record? Not, yeah, the record had nothing to do with it. I'm talking that? about the skills. 23 and 2? Hey, we did that the twice. The year we were 24 and 1. Because the one game, and that one game didn't count because the Madison game was didn't count on our record. Um, I ain't going to talk about that Madison game because we got played. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, um, that game didn't count, so technically we didn't lose that year. Matter of fact, yeah, I don't even think y'all so this, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is, this is why we're better, right? So when they when they got to New Mission, New Mission was already good. So wait, 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 what? so wait, wait, wait. So you yeah. built So wait, time out, time out. So you built the gym. We you built two. this. We <laughs> built this. Why? Not just us two. Why, why do they have Not this? Just us two. They got this because of us. So what this is, is, this is the blueprint right here. This is the blueprint. Yeah, oh, hell no. So y'all ain't gonna show homage. So, come on. No. Nah, I show homage. <laughs> when I got here. But they, they don't, they, you they don't know what it's like. They nah. never experienced what it's like to lose. We lost by 80 points one game. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, we lost that's, that's, that's why y'all ain't the best. We can't relate. We, yo, we lost by 80. Like, yeah. So we know what it's like to lose, yeah, and then we know what it's like to win. Y'all never had that experience. Y'all got here, we was already winners. Right. That's, 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 that's why. That's why. For the record, for the record, for the record, for the record um, I think to go back, I think we really the winning culture really started with um, with the girls' team with Brittany when she was on the cover of the Globe in a full length picture, and then the boys' culture changed when these dudes started rocking out and nobody knew what who the school was, and um, like we beat teams. We had no business being. Like, do y'all know what we did around the country? Do you know what we did? Come on, man. Nah, they know what we did. Nah, they no, know what we did. Not, not, to, go off not saying that, to go off by saying that, who was, what was the toughest game that you ever had to face? Starting with their era. Mm -hmm. With their era, yeah. I bet. Toughest game. I think it was uh, our, our sophomore year at Winthrop. Was, it, was that the year? The toughest game? Did we win? Nah, we lost. Oh, was that, that was my freshman year. Nah. That was our freshman year. I wasn't, I wasn't so, the coach. No, what year was it was that? freshman year. It was freshman, it was freshman year. year. Oh, man. Yes. It was freshman year. Going down to Winthrop, that was like the most uh, racist right. atmosphere I've ever played. And like, I never felt so cheated in my life. Mm. I think we were up 20 and a half. <laughs> they came all the way back and beat us. I got teched out at the end of the game. I didn't want to shake hands. I didn't want nothing to do with nobody after that. I think the toughest game for us as a collective group would be our senior year at the Garden when that team went um, triangle and two against us two. We didn't really, we never seen it, and we didn't really know what to do. And everybody, like as a collective unit, everyone else stepped up when we were down. Like we weren't scoring. I probably had two points. I don't know how much. I had two, I'd actually know I had two points. I had the mid-range at the end of the game. And, and I think that the team and the guys like buying in and just understanding the concept of what we wanted to do really helped us get over the hump and I think there was a lot of pressure on us like we already won the year before we was division four we jumped up to division two and we're at the garden and everybody expected us to to win so I think that was the toughest game honestly I don't think people really give these kids enough credit for jumping from division four yeah, exactly. to division two and um, I think it's a hard thing to do and uh, I remember people were saying I was crazy and we had, I went behind everybody's back and did it and nobody really believed it until the schedule came out. 
it was a really difficult thing to do because we were playing Division Four teams. And we had beaten a Winthrop team that had two scholarship players. Mm -hmm. A guy from Winthrop ended, ended up leading the country in assists. So maybe we thought that was our level, but there was a desire for more with these guys. I felt like I wouldn't have done enough justice by these guys if I didn't move them up. You know, and we got blocked from D1, but that's another story. Go ahead, fellas. So it's the toughest game you remember from your era. They confused now. They ain't got nothing to talk about. Yeah. Look, we, we, we went to Florida and we played some guys that, you know, some high prospect guys, you know. Who? Like Oh, Vernon Carey like, Jr., ooh, number one in his class. We put like ooh, class of 2019. Where's he at? He's about to go to any school in the Yo, country. Right. He's about to go Where's school. he at? Where's he he's going? He's meeting a couple of these guys. Where's he like going? Dude? What is he like? He's a, uncommitted. A he's a sophomore junior right, right now. Where is he going? Wherever he wants. Where he going? 17s, BYBO, what you mean? That's what he does. Man, ask Andre Drummond about us. Ask Chris Dunn. Ask Carl what? Towns about us. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns. Towns. Towns had his way with y'all. I was there. I seen you it. Mean, okay. He had his way with y'all. <laughs> okay, how was the toughest game? Hold on, hold on. How was the toughest game? Hold on, hold on. Was y'all on the team with Kyle Anderson? Hold on. Was y'all on the team with Kyle Anderson? Oh, my God. He torched y'all? I was, I, was, I would like to make a public apology for the St. Anthony's game. What? And the, the reason they got out of hand is because two kids came to practice late with a plate of food. That was It's a shoot around. And I didn't play my best player that night, um, Greg Bridges. And uh, I didn't play Nate Anderson, who would have helped inside. Um, and not having those two, I mean, it was well documented that Nate, I mean, that Puda was really good because. The folks were saying, yo, man, that's why your best players are freshmen before the game. So um, not playing those guys was a huge mistake on my part. Not, but as far as playing the, the, the talent level, I mean, Vernon Carey is one of the best players in the country. Um, he is seven feet. His, his, the number three player in the country is a Serbian kid that was on his team. And we were, we were literally beating that team. We were beating that team, and we lost at the buzzer. Um, but slap, yeah, slap we played ball. a lot of, and we played a lot of with Samarino. We we played a lot of a lot of tough teams as well. We played Bishop Hendrickson at their best. Uh, we played a ton of teams. We played St. Mary's out of New York. We were we were playing teams out of state, and now I guess that's the common theme around here now. Ironically, we started the trend. So who's the who's the toughest player that each of you had to face, and if you could face him again right now? What would you do different? All right, with that question, high, like, does it have to be high school nah, basketball? Nah, any AAU? level. Any level that you ran into this player. College, AAU, high school, man. Even um, somebody from up the street. <laughs> <laughs> Shabazz Napier, Michael Carter Williams, Nernos Noel, Pat Connaughton, like Trey Burke. Yeah. Should I keep going? Like, it was Baz and Trey Burke. Those, those two, Trey, Baz and Trey Burke. Were you able to compete against Baz and Trey Burke? Yeah, they compete, but they didn't blow just, us out. You compete, but they just was on it. We won the Trey Burke game. We beat Trey, Trey Burke, but you could tell how, like he was just on a different level. He came, <laughs> in the, he came in the second half and had 30 on him in the second half. We won by 30, though. We, we won end, the we game. We ended their program. We won the game. We ended their program. But he came in the second half and had 30. He did. He did. He did. I had about I had about thirty. Years. I don't want to say none of us. It's cool. That's nah, but he did, he did what he wanted to do. Y'all, who's the toughest player you ever had to go up against? Me. It was at, I never. It was too easy. <laughs> uh, I'll say an AAU, uh, a playoff, New Heights, the point guard. Yes. From New Heights, it was like when I was a junior. It was crazy. Force him sideline, he dribbles at you. I ain't know what to do. So you working me. Where he at? He in the league? Uh, yeah. No, he's at, uh, you know I believe he's at, you know what I'm saying? I believe he's at Florida State. You know what I'm saying? Florida State, that's good enough, B. You know Yo, I don't think I can ever say I got work. You know what I'm saying? Yo? Work. He's never yeah. going to say he got <laughs> work. You ain't never going to me. Who's the toughest player you got, you got to face, Charlie? Shoot. Shoot. Me in practice. <coughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> made, him, oh. made him fall today, too, by the way. He didn't make me fall. That's, that's strapped up shorty right here. Um, I mean, oh, I, I played against a tough guy. Uh, well, tough guys. I played a bunch, of, a bunch of tough guys. I mean, playing on the UIBL circuit, you know, it's a different environment. And, you know, I had to adjust my game. So, 
Yo, the toughest name. person, I'm gonna give it to Trey Man. That, um, from the villages in Florida, Yo, had 30 something. He actually had 24, and they switched That's off the Darren. <laughs> like he was switching off the Darren in the pick and roll. He actually scored three times on you. If you fought through the screen like a man, you would have he would have you would have stayed on him, and he wouldn't have had 24. He didn't want no smoke. How was it? It was a screen, and Darren. We should have just pushed screen, the guy bro. up, fouled the guy, run through the guy, screen. run over the guy. It's my guy. No, hey. no. He scored three buckets. On it's my guy. <laughs> that mean that guy is tough though. I think you can tell the difference between the answers. Like they're soft. We're soft. They're a whole we're soft. different generation. We take dubs, though, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it's a different game. It's we can set up a game. game. It's definitely a different game. ballgame. We can. We can I got, set up a game. In four in games, they be scared. Oh, we blew up against the Twins and Todd. Game over. We up 20 already. Let me ask y'all a question. Hold on. Let me ask y'all a question. Hold on. Let me ask y'all a question. You saw what New Mission was looking like. Time out. Time out. Corey. Corey. Can't no one answer this question but Corey. Freshman year. Who was the better team? <laughs> who was not going to no, answer? Who was, answer. Coach is not answer who was the best championship team you ever coached? Mm. He's not going to answer. Mm. Us. Oh, us. The dogs. Oh. With us. Gorilla. You, 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 you got a couple of titles under your belt. Girl. Dogs. dogs. Gorilla. Nah, yeah, He's going to say the girls. girls. It's them girls. You got yeah, to yeah. yeah, yeah. do some research. But we're talking, we nah, talking, talking about the boys. We're talking about boys. We're talking about boys. Because the toughest team I ever coached was the girls' team. Cause they all was rocking sleeved, all sleeved, full sleeve ta arm tattoos, <laughs> tattoos in the neck, tattoos behind the ear, you know, trying to fight everybody, threatening pregnant coaches, everything. Um, um, I don't know. They were tough for different reasons, and it was it was literally two different eras. Um, you know, it's it's hard, but I think you have to go with the 2010 team uh, only because you had a damn near seven footer. You had a you had scholarship guys galore. And size, and they had a team, and we were, and they were feared. These guys had to be respected because of their size. But they were, they were a tough team to fear. Like Samir would do some ridiculous things in games because he was still a little boy at the time. You know, one time cheerleaders was warming up during the halftime show. He want walk right through them. Um, then he would try to intimidate people. You know, Charles. They used to call him the, the prisoner because he used to have the pooty tang here and tang. you know and Usman a, was a six nine goofball but like a he looked intimidating so he started talking you know and then Oz you know everybody knew the Oz story coming straight back from Florida and hold on Corey. You know, hold on which one of y'all would have checked Oz who's Oz checking I'm checking anybody. Which one of y'all would have held Oz? They, they think it's funny. They think it's a joke. Like I'm being <laughs> serious. It is a joke. <laughs> it is like... Who's checking us? Oh, y'all understand. Oz is a different level. Why you say they better than me? Oz is a different level. Quick question. Y'all yeah, ain't got no shooters on that team. When y'all picked up the basketball, and you know when you're in high school, you thinking basketballs probably gonna get me girls, probably gonna get me a pass. Out to stay late. If I was gonna get me to travel, do X, Y, Z. Life after basketball. <clears throat> Did y'all think that college would be that next step when you came into high school? That you were playing college basketball? No, I didn't know nothing about college until Corey mentioned. <laughs> I didn't know nothing about college basketball or nothing. Like college wasn't an option because couldn't afford it. I ain't. I ain't. I ain't know nothing about college. I knew the guys from uh, from the projects, well, Blaylock, Tony Lee, and those guys. They went to college, but I ain't know too much about college until Corey like introduced it to me and like let me know like, hey, you can go to basketball, you can go to your academics, and that's when it was introduced to me. I, I, I could care less about college when I got to high school. High school, I knew a, a little bit about college, but I ain't. If it wasn't for like Corey bringing us to like watch film plays. Play and stuff. Like when we went to Ty to watch Ty and see how it was different. And then he told us like this is what's gonna happen once you leave here. Then that's when I got a, like a better understanding. Did you expect college basketball after high school? Uh I well growing up, not growing up, but coming into high school, I died like mentally, like I wasn't I didn't care about school, like I just wanted to play ball, so I like I expected that like somebody would take me, but if they didn't, it wasn't gonna like 
bothered me, but like now today, I'm kind of glad that I'm in college. It's helped me. A, it's helped me a lot. What's the craziest thing that ever happened in practice? Like it doesn't even have to be a Corey because I know you guys have stories for days. But Corey probably throwing you out in the cold. But what's the <laughs> <laughs> but what's the craziest thing that ever happened in practice? Like I've I've sat through one of the practices. I've seen that that drill that Corey does where you gotta fight for the ball and dudes be knocking each other into the bleachers. I just wanna know what's the craziest thing that ever happened in practice. Like who walked away with a black eye? Yo, Pito. The craziest <laughs> one, Pito got me. I, you probably gonna say it. Get the mic. What you, what you talking about? The, 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 the craziest thing Corey ever did is have his practice outside in the snow. Yeah, it was. <laughs> like, what are you doing yeah, in the was, snow? Yeah, it was a brick house. Wait, 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 we had to pre prepare for our game the next day, so he was like, all right, we're going to practice outside for 30 minutes. <laughs> yo, we was out there for like a little over an hour. Yo, it was brick. It was brick. That was like, it was, it was cool, though, because like. It really brought us together. Yeah, it brought us together. Like, and as surprising as it is, like as cold as it was, we was all out there going hard. And having fun. And I don't think there's not a lot of people that can get a bunch of teenagers to do that. Well, Corey got us. You know what's so funny? The only reason they was practicing outside, because literally, no, every, I don't. I think people thought we were a joke because we were in the state tournament, and um, I was like, "Damn, we about to go play Winthrop," and Winthrop, our nemesis, our you know what I'm saying, and they're ranked in the state. We're ranked in the state, and I had no way to practice, so I was like, "Yo, pile up in the car, let's go." And, uh, <laughs> everybody know what that means when they be pile up in the car, um, and we pra and we practiced, and um, you know. Yeah, that was that was pretty that was pretty dumb because I don't think you. No, the funny thing is like I remember before the next game, like we're like about to do my pregame talk and I hear a bunch of <laughs> <laughs> a lot of inhaling. I'm like, oh man, um, but you know we've been through a lot. I remember before that Winthrop game, some dudes, two dudes from. Um, Two goon looking Italian dudes was like, yo, y'all, you ain't got a prayer in hell today, McCarthy. And some dude was like, yeah, you arrogant. And I was like, all right, man, we go, we about the 30 piece, y'all. And then um, there were nowhere to be found after that game. I think that was one of the best games we've ever played. So you're known to be very controversial, right? Um, I know first hand from having a lot of conversations. Um, people try to throw you.